So like I was saying, now that you've made your G code, there are a couple things you need to know and understand about your machine before you actually start manufacturing. So first things first, CNC stands for Computer Numerical Control. So if you come closer to the machine, you can actually see all the little you know, intricate aspects of it. You can see that we have a, a bed sheet of aluminum metal of 1 8 inch that we use for our robot. And you can see that we have this little wooden bed underneath it. And we'll get to why we need that in a second. Coming over here, you can see that we actually have the, the four millimeter end mill that we use to drill into this metal. You can see the spindle and the whole basic apparatus over here. If you come around this way, you can see that there's all, all the wiring and all the you know, things necessary. You can see there's a lot of metal shards here because we cut on this a lot. If you come over here, it's kind of a tight space. If you come over here, you can see we've got our, well, we'll start with this. We've got our water cooling mechanism, which keeps the computer cool, the machine cool, you know, and make sure it doesn't overheat or anything, similar to a car. You can see we have our whole, this is basically the sort of box that runs the whole thing. You can see we've got our laptop, which will have our Mach 3 mill, which is loading, and I'll get to that in a second. And that's basically our whole CNC shop. This is basically, you know, all the stuff that you need to know and need to have in order to start manufacturing. A couple of other things you can see is that there's, you know, limit switches on the machine and, you know, this remote that can control all the movements of the spindle in the X, Y, and Z direction. So now that you've made your G-code and you basically know everything about your CNC machine, now we're going to learn how to actually communicate your G-code to the machine. So if you look here, we have our Mach 3 mil interface. So when you first open up your Mach 3 mill, you're going to see your reset button blinking and you're going to see your 0x, 0y, 0z, and your 04, you know, buttons outlined in red. So first, what you're going to want to do is click your reset button. And then what you're going to want to do is click this ref all home button. So you can see what this is actually going to do is it's going to let the computer know where its limitations are as it's going to hit each limit switch for each axis, each app, yeah. So now you can see the machine moving and you can hear those little clicks in the background hitting the limit switches. This is kind of a mandatory thing you need to do before getting into cutting. So now it's just gonna, so now if you look here, everything is outlined in green and we're all good to go. So you know, I can move the bit and everything. And now we can pick a nice spot on our metal sheet to cut. So now that we have our machine, you know, all set and ready to go on this end, what we're actually gonna be doing is loading our G code file. So, if, as you guys may recall, you know, we made three distinct G-code files previously. We made the outline, the pockets, and the holes. So in order to actually get a clear understanding of how big this piece is, we're going to need to load the outline file. So you can see now in our top right, we can see the piece in this sort of, you know, section view. And we're not actually going to be cutting this first. We're going to be doing the holes and then the pockets. But this just, we want to ensure that our piece isn't going to, you know, cut off the board or cut into any, like, gaps or holes that we may have already in our metal bed sheet. So this is going to give us a clear understanding of whether or not it's going to fit. So now that we've loaded our G-code, you know, the outline piece that's roughly, I think, two inches by two inches, we want to make sure that it actually fits on this bench. You can see we've done a lot of prior cuts, but we definitely have some space over here. So this is where we're going to choose to cut it. I may not have mentioned this previously, but we're using an Omeo X8 CNC. And in my hand is this little controller that we use to you know, help us move the individual axes. So you can see Y minus moves it here, Z minus is gonna move our you know, spindle and our bit down, and then X minus is gonna move it in the X direction. So we'll link all of these parts down below, but for now, let's just get to actually zeroing our axes. So we'll start with the X and Y. So as you guys may remember, when we clicked the model box point in our G code, what this tells us is, it kind of orients that piece on this bed. So yeah, I'll, I'll get to that. So how we, the way that we clicked it was that we clicked it in the top left. What that means is that on this bed, it's also going to be on the top left. So here, I'll show you. So what we're going to do is, if our piece is roughly two inches by two inches, I think we've got a decent amount of space in this area over here. It'll definitely fit a piece two inches by two inches. And like I said, we clicked our model box point in the top left corner. So once again, here we're going to do it in the top left corner. So you can see I'm going to move my Y down, move my X over here, and I'm, I can even lower my uh, bit, not too close to the metal, but just enough to know whether or not it's going to cut it properly. So you can see when I'm zeroing this a little bit further, I can move slightly in this direction, and then we're going to move a little bit more this way. And this is probably going to be good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zero X axis, and zero our y-axis. 
So now that we've zeroed our x and y axis, we can't be 100% sure that it's actually going to fit on the bed. So if you can look at our Mach 3 mil interface here, we want to make sure that, well, this piece has some curves, so you know it's not going to be exact. But what we're going to do is we're going to move around the exact you know, what we approximate to be the size of the cut and make sure that it fits on the space that we actually allocated for the cut. So you can see if I'm moving along the length of this piece, oop, went a little bit too much there. Now I'm moving along the width of the piece. And I'm going back the other way. Oh, we're shooting a lot here. And one more time. So was that good, Neil? Yep. Fits in the space, perfect. So now that we've leveled our x and y axes, there's one more axis left to zero, and that's our z axis. So you know, for those of you who have worked with 3D printers before, this is very similar to you know leveling your nozzle with your print bed. So you can see, I have this piece of paper with me, it's just like a standard piece of paper. And now that we have our you know print area established, we need to zero this. So I'm gonna place it right here, as flat as it can be, right? And you can see that I have my controller here and it's clicked in continuous. I click this button and the, you can see this light indicates that it's in continuous mode. And what that means is that I can very, very smoothly move it down. But to ensure the max amount of precision, as we get closer, we wanna start moving down in increments rather than just guesswork because we wanna be very precise with this. So you can see I'm moving it down, moving it down. Now it's getting, you know, it's not actually that close. I'll move a little bit more down. You can see our paper's bubbling up. So you can see you can still move but we want it to be very, very close. So now what we're gonna do is that we share, you know, controller here. We're gonna click this button that says one millimeter. What this means is that it's gonna start stepping down in increments of one millimeter rather than just guessing where to go. So if I click Z minus, you know, I'm just gonna wait so you can hear it. And it's actually too much. So what we're gonna do is click Z plus, right, because it's still in increment mode. It's gonna take a while because it wants to be precise. And instead of that, we're gonna click the 0 0.1 millimeter step option, right? Because we're quite close. And we're gonna click Z minus. And you can see the paper can still move a little bit. So we're just gonna click it one more time. Obviously it's gonna vary depending on, you know, how close you get, but you might have to click it a couple of times before the paper actually stops moving. You can see it's getting close. So one more click should do it. You can see now that our paper has stopped moving, we know this is the exact area to zero it. So we can go ahead and hit the zero Z button. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so now that we're all set and ready to cut, there are a few things you guys should keep in mind regarding safety. Obviously, you know, we're working with a very intricate machine and there are a lot of things that can go wrong with it so safety should be your number one priority. So a couple of ways that you know we take care of our safety is by using these face shields and these you know headphones. What these do is protect our hearing and protect our whole face in case any you know metal shards come flying their way. If you come around here you can see that we have a vacuum over here and what this helps us do and our bag of lollipops fell. But yep, get that footage right there. Good. Uh, another thing that we do to keep our safety in touch, you know, intact is that we have this vacuum here. So often, you know, we're cutting parts that have pockets and pieces that are going to fly out of the piece. That is not the actual outline. And what this helps us do is while the machine is cutting, you have to be very, very careful. And as soon as it cuts the pocket, your vacuum should vacuum it right up. Make sure you have, you know, like a shop crew vacuum as a regular vacuum that goes on the floor and not going to cut it. And if you follow me this way, this red button over here is sort of like a, you know, plan Z. So if in the event that, you know, your machine goes too much one way, it drills into like a screw or does something, or on a side where there's no limit switch, you can slam this and it's gonna stop the machine, although it is gonna mess up all your data and, you know, get rid of all your zeros and everything. And one more way that you can do it is by looking on your Mach 3 mil interface and you can see there's a stop button right here and this is gonna stop your whole cut. So those are just a few safety measures, you know, fail safe set in place. But once, you know, you guys have your CNC cutting buddy and all your safety gear and everything on, you guys should be ready to cut. So now that we know that our piece is gonna fit in, you know, the area that we've given it, we're not gonna start by cutting out the outline, but we're actually gonna start by cutting out the holes. So you can see we're gonna go to our holes file, double tap that. You can see it's gonna generate this sort of path here, but what this is actually gonna do is just gonna be the path of the spindle 
And since our part only has, I believe, three holes, it's just gonna cut those. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit cycle start and the spindle's gonna start spinning. So now that we've cut our holes, we're gonna move on and choose our next file, which is gonna be our pockets. So if we click our pocket file, you can see the little path at the top here, and then we're gonna hit cycle start. So now that we've cut our pockets, we have the final file to load, which is gonna be our outline file. So you can see, have our outline file, and this is the file we used initially to actually trace the path to make sure that the piece fit. And we're gonna go ahead and hit cycle start. So here's a small test piece that we just cut. So that just shows how cool CNCing is and how, how it works. So typically, with larger pieces, you're going to mount them down with screws just to make sure that it doesn't um, fly out when you cut the full product. However, in this case, due to the small size of this piece, we weren't able to mount it down, and it still worked and it didn't fly out. But just make sure you're careful with bigger pieces in the future. Thank you guys for tuning in to another Don't Blink tutorial video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and absolutely smash that notification button so you guys know when we upload. And again, if you guys have any questions, please don't be afraid to reach out. We're very active on the FPC Discord, and we'll put all of our socials down in the description.